Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome all to this 18th lecture of this course. So this 18th lecture is on cellular uptake mechanism of nanomaterials. So in this lecture we are going to learn what are the various multiple portals available for cellular entry and also how the nanoparticle can enter the cells through phagocytosis and phenocytosis process. And here we are also going to learn how the nanoparticles properties are uh, influencing the cellular uptake. So the design of smart multifunctional nanosystems for intracellular imaging and uh, targeted therapeutic applications require a thorough understanding of the mechanism of nanoparticles. Okay? So because the nanoparticles is uh, considered as one of the important delivery vehicle for delivering the drugs and genes because the site specific delivery of drugs and therapeutics can significantly reduce the drug toxicity and increase the therapeutic effects. So here, so when we design any nanomaterials, it is better to understand the complete mechanism how it is taken up by the cells. Because when you understand the complete mechanism, then we can easily target to the particular cell and also we can release the drug to increase the therapeutic efficiency. And for biological and clinical application, so the ability to control and manipulate the accumulation of nanoparticles for an extended period of time inside the cell can lead to improvements in diagnostic sensitivity and therapeutic efficiency. For example, if you are making a nanomaterial for uh, diagnostic applications, so it should enter the particular cancer cell and it has to stay for more time so that we can get more signal and we can detect the cancer in the early stage. And also this uh, illustrating the exocytosis mechanism and metabolism of nanoparticles in the cells could lead to a better understanding of nanoparticle toxicity. That is if the nanoparticles are trapped in the vesicles and leave the cells intact, they are unlikely to induce cellular toxicity. For example, if a nanoparticle is entering into the cell okay, and it is not entering the nucleus or the cytoplasm and it is leaving the cells intact, then it will not induce a cellular cytotoxicity to kill the particular cells. Okay. So it is better to understand the mechanism how it can enter into the cell and what is the subsequent process, how it can induce a therapeutic efficiency. Those things has to be understood thoroughly before we take the nanomedicine to the clinical application. So let us see how these nanoparticles enter in the body. So here this nanoparticle enters the body through the dermal, ocular and respiratory as well as the gastrointestinal systems. So once it is enter the biological environment, so there will be formation of protein corona. Let us see what is protein corona. So in the biological environment, the nanoparticle will adopt a biological identity with the formation of protein corona on its surface due to adsorption of layers of proteins and small molecules such as amino acids and sugars. And uh, the inner hard corona rapidly forms in seconds and strongly attached to the nanoparticle surface. And the secondary soft corona is found atop, so which can take hours to equilibrate due to its high sensitivity to the external environment composition and conditions. So once the nanoparticle enter into the uh, cell, then what happens is like uh, there will be formation of protein corona. So proteins and amino acids will form a layer on the top of this nanoparticle. The first layer is called as hard corona which is strongly attached to the nanoparticle and followed by that there will be a uh, soft corona. Okay. So here you can see here the physical properties of nanoparticles including the size, shape and surface chemistry so which is going to affect the final corona composition. Okay. And based on that corona composition the toxicity effect will be varied. Okay. So you can see here this is your uh, hard corona which is tightly attached to the nanoparticle surface and followed by that you are having the soft corona. So the soft corona it is the outer soft corona that is presented to and directly interact with the cell rather than the original nanoparticle surface. So this can pose a challenge while designing specific targeting nanoparticle. So here so this soft corona is going to interact with your cell okay, not the nanoparticle uh, charge or anything. So the based on the soft corona, it is going to give the therapeutic effect. So when you design any nanoparticles for a targeted delivery, so you have to consider the effect of this soft corona also. 
So let us see the multiple portals of cellular entry. So nanoparticles are of similar size to typical cellular components and can efficiently intrude the living cells by exploiting this cellular endocytosis machinery and it can result in the permanent cell damage. So only specialized cells such as macrophages are capable of phagocytosis, a form of endocytosis in which the cells engulf larger particles and almost all the cells can internalize nanoparticles by phenocytosis. Okay. So when the nanoparticle goes into the body, there is a cell called macrophages, so that will uptake the nanoparticle by a process called phagocytosis. The phagocytosis process means cell eating. So and most of the other cells will be taken up the nanoparticle by a process called phenocytosis. Phenocytosis means cell drinking. So let us see the uh, mechanism of endocytosis in details. So this endocytosis is divided into phagocytosis and phenocytosis. As I told you earlier, the phagocytosis is cell eating process and the phenocytosis is cell drinking process. So under this phenocytosis, again there are subclasses like macrocytosis and clathrin dependent and cavalier dependent and clathrin and cavalier independent. So this uh, phagocytosis is a uh, particle dependent okay? and uh, this phenocytosis again subdivided into four uh, categories like uh, macro phenocytosis. So here the size of the vesicle will be more than 1 micrometer and this uh, clathrin mediated endocytosis, here the size of the vesicle is 120 nanometer and this cavillin mediated endocytosis, the size is 60 nanometer. And in the case of uh, clathrin and cavillin independent endocytosis, the size of the vesicle is 90 nanometer. So let us see this mechanism in detail. So first one is phagocytosis. So, so here the specific endocytic pathway predominantly occurred in phagocytes such as uh, macrophages and neutrophils and monocytes. Okay. So these are the cells will be involved in this phagocytosis process and uh, so relatively large particles are more likely to take this way. So the bigger size particles will be taken up by the cells by phagocytosis process and nanoparticles which adopt this way of entry into cells need to be recognized by the opsonin firstly. So the opsonins are like immunoglobin or complement component and blood serum proteins. Okay. So when the nanoparticle enter into our uh, body, what happens is this immune system will try to come and attack it. So to, uh, this immune system has to be get activated. For that, on the top of the nanoparticle, there will be some opsonins will be attached. Opsonins like antibodies or complement protein or blood serum proteins that will be attached to the nanoparticle. So once it attached, this mag, uh, macrophages will go to the nanoparticle and it will engulf. So you can see here, so this is your nanoparticle. On the top of the nanoparticle, some uh, signals opsonins are attached. Okay. So once it is attached, so this macrophage will uh, go and eat that particular nanoparticles. So let us see the phagocytes in details. So these opsonized nanoparticles bind to the cell surface and interact with the receptor and it will induce a cup shaped membrane extension formation. Okay. So this membrane extension enclose the nanoparticles and then internalize them forming the phagosomes. So which have a diameter of 0.5 to 10 micrometer and finally the phagosomes move to fuse with the lysosomes. Okay. So then the cargo contained in the phagosomes will be destroyed by acidification and enzymolysis in the lysosomes. So therefore to produce the desired effects, nanomedicine should bypass this route to avoid the degradation. So if you are making some nanoparticle for therapeutic applications, so that has to escape from this phagocytosis process. Then only it can reach the target cell and it can deliver the drug. So you can see the phagocytosis process in details. See here, this is your nanoparticles or uh, nanobots and uh, it is having this opsonin, okay, that is your ligand. And when it binds to this macrophage cells, which is having the receptor, so and it forms a vesicle that is called as phagosomes. And this uh, phagosomes will fuse with the lysosomes, okay. And uh, inside the lysosome, you are having lot of digestive enzymes. So and uh, this will degrade these nanomaterials, then it release the degraded nanomaterials. So if your nanoparticle is carrying your therapeutic molecule like anti-cancer drug or anything, so if it is taken up by these macrophage cells by phagocytosis process, then it will degrade the nanoparticles, then it cannot induce the desired therapeutic effect. So let us see the next mechanism that is called as a phenocytosis, okay. So it is called as cell drinking. So it is a non-specific route where the membrane invaginates and engulf the materials and then pinches off producing vesicles of sizes between 0.5 and 5 micrometer. So this mechanism sometimes referred to as macro phenocytosis for larger vesicle formation and it is primarily used for the uptake of fluids and other essential materials required for the cells such as salts, glucose and amino acids. So this is a normal process for uptaking the salts and glucose and amino acids. Okay, 
and if any foreign particle comes nanoparticles they can also taken up by this phenocytosis process and again this uh, phenocytosis process classified into clathrin dependent cavalier dependent macrophenocytosis or cavalier and clathrin independent so based on the proteins involved in this pathway so let us see clathrin dependent endocytosis that is cme so it is present in all mammalian cells it is playing a major role in the cellular entry so after nanoparticles interact with the receptors on cytomembrane a kind of cytosolic protein named clathrin will polymerize on the cytosolic side of the plasma where the cargo is internalized so after wrapping the nanoparticles inside so the vesicle is pinched off through the gtps activity of dynamin and uh, forming a clathrin coated vesicles so with the energy supplied by the actin this ccv move towards the inside the cells and the root is regulated by the cytosolatin so this clathrin coat is shed off in the cytosol to release the therapeutic molecule so you can see here this is your uh, nanoparticle okay so it is coming and binding to the cell and this is a clathrin protein it is attaching to this membrane and it is forming a clathrin coated pit okay and it is forming like a this kind of vesicle and once the uh, your nanoparticle is entrapped into this vesicle and the vesicle can be closed with the help of dynamin and uh, this will be taken in inside the cell and there your clathrin will be released and only the naked vesicle will go into the endosome and there it will be degraded and it will release the uh, your therapeutic molecule to the cytoplasm or the nucleus so where is the destination of these vesicles as i told you earlier it may be associated with the receptor that nanoparticles ligands attach to for example if you have the low density lipoprotein particles and it will be internalized through the ldl receptor and it will be transferred to the lysosomes for degradation but if you are having iron loaded transferrin so that will be engulfed by uh, transferrin receptor and recycled to the cell surface okay and this route can be blocked by inhibitors like uh, uh, chlorpromazine or a hypotonic medium or potassium depletion so by using these inhibitors we can uh, inhibit the uh, pathway cme pathway and we can understand whether our nanoparticle is following this cme pathway or not so next one is cavalier dependent endocytosis so this is a common cellular entry pathway so most of the pathogens including viruses bacteria select this way to avoid the lysosomal degradation so as it can bypass the lysosomes so when you make the nanoparticles if it is following this cavalier dependent endocytosis pathway that is better because it is uh, escaping from this lysosomal degradation so it can release a therapeutic molecule into the cytoplasm or the nucleus so here the cavalier is a protein exists in most of the cells and it play a major role in this uh, cavalier dependent endocytosis so there are three forms of cavalier cavalier 1 2 3 okay and depends on the cell and depends on the application this protein comes and play a major role so let us see the cavalier dependent endocytosis in details so once the nanoparticles uh, or the virus which can come and interact with the receptors and that will induce the formation of flask shaped vesicles okay so which are cut off from the membrane by dynamin and this cavalier vesicles traffic to fuse with the cavosomes or multivesicular bodies which have a neutral ph so these cavosomes containing nano medicines move along with the microtubules to the endoplasmic reticulum and here this nano materials in the endoplasmic reticulum penetrate into the cytosol okay and then enter the nucleus through the nucleophore complex so compared to the clathrin dependent endocytosis this pathway takes longer time and has smaller vesicles in the process and the nano materials taking this way is it will avoid the degradative fate and it will enhance their delivery to a target organ such as endoplasmic reticulum or the nucleus so which is very important for improving the therapeutic delivery for example if you are making a nano particle for uh, delivering anti cancer drug or any other therapeutic molecule so if it takes this uh, cavalier dependent endocytosis pathway so it can escape from the lysosomes and it can escape from the lysosome and it can reach the cytoplasm or the nucleus to increase the therapeutic efficiency so in this cavalier dependent endocytosis so the nanoparticles will come and bind to the cell okay and uh, mainly this uh, cholesterol enriched membrane will be there uh, at the receptor site and here you can see here this is your uh, this v shape that is your cavalier protein and another protein is uh, cavin this is a light blue color okay and it forms like a flask shaped uh, cavalier and this dynamin will come and uh, help in enclosing this vesicle and this vesicle will go and bind to this endosome and 
the material inside this nanoparticles will be released into the cytoplasm as well as the nucleus. So, the next process is uh, macrophenocytosis. So, it is commonly defined as the transient and uh, this is a clathrin and cavilin independent growth factor induced or the actin driven endocytosis. Okay. So, that can internalize the surrounding fluid into large vacuoles and it can be found in almost all the cells okay. and with a few exceptions like uh, brain microvessels, endothelial cells. Okay. And this pathway is generally started with an external simulation which activate the receptor tyrosine kinases. So, let us see the macrophenocytes in details. So, when the virus or your uh, nanoparticles come and attach to the cell, so it will activate the intracellular signaling which leads to the uh, production of actin filaments. This actin filaments will make like this protrusion and this protrusion will cover the your nanoparticles and it forms a macrophenosomes and this macrophenosomes will uh, reach the your uh, endosome and there it will be releasing your nanoparticles with the therapeutic molecule and that can be taken up by the cytoplasm or the nucleus. So, in this clathrin and cavily independent endocytosis, so which is mainly relies on the cholesterol and requires a specific lipid composition. So, according to GTPSs which play a, a major role in regulating this cellular entry pathway, so this clathrin and cavily independent endocytosis is classified into ARF6 dependent, CDC42 dependent or rho A dependent. And here diamin also play an important role, but the mechanism is not completely understood. So, let us see some of the examples. So, the nanoparticles may enter these cells uh, through different endocytosis and passive mechanisms. So, depending on the physical properties of nanoparticles and the composition of the bilayer. Okay. So, the nanoparticles have the ability to utilize all four of the endocytosis mechanisms to enter these cells. So, some of the examples we see here. So, polystyrene latex nanoparticles smaller than 200 nanoparticles could enter the cells through CME mechanism and the larger nanoparticles will enter the cells through the cavalier endocytosis. And the gold nanoparticle with the diameter of 3.4 nanometer can enter the macrophage cells through the phenocytosis and uh, 200 nanometer polymeric nanoparticles would enter the cells through cavalier endocytosis and uh, by changing the uh, nanoparticle surface groups and it can also enter the uh, cancer cells by CME as well as phenocytosis process. So, based on the uh, surface charges again the mechanism of cellular uptake will be varied. So, here the nanoparticles do not necessarily undertake the endocytosis process to enter the cell. For example, silica nanoparticles between 15 to 200 nanometer have been reported to translocate through a membrane through the passive mechanism. So, if you want to study whether your nanoparticle is uh, following a uh, endocytic pathways, so we can use the markers to study the intracellular fate of these nanoparticles. Some of the classical probers or markers known to be internalized through the specific endocytic pathway. For example, this LDL, this low density lipoprotein and transferrin enter the cell through the clathrin dependent endocytosis. So, they are commonly used as the markers for CMV. And also, we can use this like a cholerotoxin or cigotoxin okay, and uh, even cavalin 1, so which are usually used as a markers for cavalier dependent endocytosis. And again, we can also use the dextran is the marker for macrophenocytosis. So, when you attach this dextran or this uh, particular protein and we can understand whether it is enter, uh, entering the cells through this particular pathway or not. And there are several dyes available for uh, specific organelles in the cell. For example, lysotracker and lysosensor for lysosome. Okay. So, this lysotracker dye will stain only the lysosome and they can be used to detect the co-localization of lysosome and the labeled nanoparticles with the confocal microscopy. So, let us see in this picture, uh, uh, we have used this uh, cancer cell lines and it is stained with the lysotracker green. Okay. So, this lysotracker green will strain only the lysosome of the cells and this is a epirubicin. Epirubicin is an anti-cancer drug and which has the intrinsic red color fluorescence and when we overlay these images, we can see here this uh, anti-cancer drug is entering the nucleus and uh, your uh, lysosomes that is the lysotracker green that is on the cytoplasm. Okay. And here the all the red fluorescent signals were mostly distributed in the nuclear region and did not merge with the green fluorescent signals of the lysotracker. So, it shows that this nanoparticle uh, is escaping from the lysosome and it is entering into the nucleus to deliver the particular therapeutic molecule. So, there are several inhibitors also available which can be used to block the specific endocytic pathway to confirm whether it is employed by the nanoparticles to enter the cells. So, these are some of the examples like hypertonic sucrose or uh, chlorpromazine 
and potassium depletion so which can be used to inhibit the clathrin dependent endocytosis and this chemicals can be used to inhibit the cavula dependent endocytosis and these molecules can be used to block the macrophenocytosis. So, by using these kind of chemicals we can block the particular endocytic pathway and uh, we can add our nanoparticle and we can check whether our nanoparticle is following this particular pathway or not. And here the nanoparticles properties play a major role in this cellular uptake. For example, the nanoparticle size, shape, surface charge and surface functional groups and also nanoparticles hydrophilicity. So, these are the various properties which is going to play a major role in this cellular uptake. So, let us see how the size plays a major role in cellular uptake. So, the size of the vesicles that contain nanoparticles varies with the specific pathway and the particle size should be small enough to enter the vesicles and the size range from 10 nanometer to 5 nanometer and limited up to 5 micrometer. So, it depends on the size the particle will take the different kind of cellular entry and the larger particles are most likely to be engulfed by macrophenocytosis and the size of the vesicle involved in the clathrin-mediated endocytosis is approximately 100 nanometer and the size involved in cavalier mediated endocytosis is 60 to 80 nanometer. And let us see this shape. So, until that there is no specific conclusion on the pathway selection of nanoparticles based on the shape. Some of the reports are showing that a rod shape uh, particles have more cellular entry when compared to the spherical shape, but still lot of research is going on there is no proper conclusion. So, at similar lengths uh, spirocylindrical nanoparticles have shown a higher lipid bilayer translation efficiency when compared with the spherical or pyramidal or conical nanoparticles. And depending on the diameter of carbon nanotubes, the cellular entry of the carbon nanotubes can occur either passively or endocytosis. Okay. So, with the smaller diameters reported to pass through the membranes passively. And again, when you use the carbon nanotubes okay, or nano rods, depends on the size and depends on the diameter of the nanoparticles or nano rods. So, it can select the particular pathway to enter into the cell. So, let us see the effect of particle shape on the phagocytosis. So, this omega is an angle between the membrane normal at the point of attachment. Suppose, if the omega angle is less than 45, so the particles can be internalized successfully and if the omega angle is more than 45, the internalization of the particles can be inhibited. And let us see the role of surface charge. So, here the partially charged nanoparticles can escape from endosomes after internalization and it will exhibit a perinuclear localization because of the proton sponge effect. And here the nanoparticles without any charge at physiological pH may interact with the cells with the aid of hydrophobic and hydrogen bond interactions. So, let us see what is the proton sponge effect. So, the positively charged nanoparticles will attach to the cells and it forms a endosome and these endosomes will fuse with your lysosome okay, and it forms a uh, endolysosome. And this endolysosome due to the more amount of positive charge in the endolysosome, it will break and it will release the nanoparticle into the cytoplasm and this nanoparticle can release the drug to the nucleus and it can induce the therapeutic effect. So, this is called as proton sponge effect. And here the neutral particles coated with hydrophilic polymers can prevent the interaction with the cytomembrane leading to less absorption and anionic particles may be endocytosis through the interaction with the positive site of the proteins in the membrane okay. and they can be highly captured by the cells because of their repulsive interaction with the negatively charged cell surface. So, the positively charged nanoparticles can easily attach to the cells as you know their cells have the negatively charge and this anionic nanoparticles so that can be taken up by the positively charged protein receptor on the cell surface. So, this Cationic nanoparticles strongly interact with the membrane and enter the cells rapidly and these anionic particles bind the positive site at the membrane and enter the cells and again neutral nanoparticles can also enter into the cells through the various process. So, here these cationic nanoparticles mainly enter the cells through the CME and uh, some research uh, shows that uh, they can utilize macrophenocytosis or cavalier and clathrin independent endocytosis or it can even follow multiple pathways including cavalier mediated endocytosis and mainly the anionic nanoparticles. So, these are likely to be taken up by the cavalier dependent endocytosis and again the neutral nanoparticles uh, there is no uh, clear preference for specific routes. So, let us see the role of surface hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. 
So these hydrophobic nanoparticles have higher affinity for the cell membrane than hydrophilic ones. So leading to an improvement of cell uptake in the kinetics and the amount. And these hydrophilic polymers used to modified nanoparticles such as polyethylene glycol PEG or the PVP and dextron, so which form a cloud to suppress the interaction between the nanoparticles and the lipid bilayer of the cells. So thus it will increase the uh, prolonged circulation of the particular nanoparticle in the system. And again the chemical composition at the nanoparticle surface also determines the surface hydrophobicity and uh, which influence the root of cellular uptake. And nanoparticles with different hydrophobicity present different amenity with the cell membrane. So you can see here if you have the hydrophobic particle or the hydrophilic particle, so it will be taken up by the cells depends on the affinity with the cell membrane. So as a summary of this lecture, in this lecture we have learnt uh, what is the role of protein corona and what are the various multiple portals available for cellular entry of the nanoparticles and we also uh, learned the details of phagocytosis and phenocytosis process, how the nanoparticles can use this process to enter the cell and we have also learned how the nanoparticles properties influence their cellular uptake. So I will end my lecture here, I thank you all for listening to this lecture, I will see you all in another interesting lecture.